at the Prime Tech right now, and that is the heaviest machine that I tow very often. I've towed heavier than that, not with this truck. This will be the heaviest I've ever hauled or pulled with this truck ever. This truck, this is my Ram 3500. I normally haul it with my 5500, but it's Sunday, nice easy tow, and uh, I don't want to go beating on this truck unless I need to. So this tow, I could have just used my 5500, but for the sake of the video, we're gonna use this truck to see how it does because it is Ram 3500. They're quoted to be rated at 30,000 pounds, what they'll be able to tow. This is uh, automatic, has a ISN 410s, 385 horsepower, 930 torque. This thing's a hoss right off the line. I love this truck. One thing I hate about this truck is the freaking fenders on the dualies are huge. I forgot to put my tow mirrors out. I can't see the trailer. And it's a full width 30K tandem dually gooseneck trailer. I can't see it behind these big old fenders, but no worries. We'll flip them out when we get to the job. But our total weight behind the truck today is going to be a little bit over 30,000 pounds. Don't you know harass me too much about that we'll take it nice and easy should be fine but i've hauled it several several times with my 5500 with no issues but i just i gotta see how well this truck can do you see if it's worth the money but i'm pretty excited to go out there and test this bad larry out so we'll get out there and try her So we are at the job now quick cover right here trailer weighs online it says it weighs about 8500 pounds that's before you add mega ramps chains and all that stuff i got a winch added on and a spare tire so we'll just leave it simple sake we'll just say 8500 pounds we'll climb up into this machine right here and i'll show you guys its sticker on how much it weighs can you see it right there wait 21,513 pounds so it's right at 30 it is right there at 30 give or take a little bit extra I'm gonna say there's a little bit extra involved but we're gonna do what we're gonna do and I think this trucks are gonna do it just fine so we'll just say 30,000 we're gonna go ahead and load it up and uh, we'll check the height right now to see how much it sags all right so right there it is 15 and three quarter inches we're gonna go ahead and get this thing situated and load the machine up and we'll see how much it saves all right i don't know how many of you guys watch some of the same other channels that i watch but there's a guy pretty successful youtube channel i give him a lot of credit but he does some pretty interesting videos they're kind of dorky but at the same time they're pretty cool and he always drops his ramps like that. I hate doing that, but they weigh so much it breaks my back. I did a review on this trailer earlier this year. It did a pretty good, got a decent amount of views. Nothing too special, but I talked in that video about what trailer I wanted to buy after this one. Oh, it will not be flip ramps like that. There will be no dovetail BS like that. Absolutely not. Several people told me to try out Gator Made. So I texted Gator Made. I talked to them. 
Uh, I got some prices and stuff. I don't know if, because I asked them some shipping details, how I could get the trailer out here, California, there, back east. They did not return one single email to me after I told them I was in California. Granted, there is a lot of hate for California, but there's a lot of good working people here still. Uh, we all have to suffer and fight through, you know, gas tax, regular tax, everything tax. Price of living's higher here. And now companies don't want to deal with out here. Now I'm not trying to bash Gator made, but it wasn't like I just sent them a text saying, hey, I'm in California, what can you do about shipping? I sent several after that, asking why aren't they writing back? nothing several emails no response so i will not be buying gator made if you have a gator made and it's doing you good congratulations i hope it stays with you and stays good but uh i am very much leaning toward iron bowl trailers so if anybody from iron bowl is here listening to this video let's talk i'm very interested in getting one of those trailers but i want to know some more information firsthand and i'd like to see one firsthand but my experience with iron bowl is uh, North Star makes the flatbed that I have on my 5500 and that is an excellent flatbed so I will I would like to go with a brand that I already know a little bit and that flatbed is doing outstanding it's doing great and if I had a trailer that held up to that standard that'd be awesome be the same as this uh, but with a hydraulic dovetail so again anybody from Iron Bull or North Star that is watching this let's talk I need to get one of those things hopefully this next year first thing but let's go ahead and get this thing loaded up and we'll go from there. That's a good looking kit right there. All right, let's get the tape measure out and we'll see how much that thing sagged. Where's the tape at? Ah, sagged an inch and three quarters. That's not bad. Make sure everything's still all A-OK -okay tied in there. We'll tie this sucker down. Oh, it does have extra weight due to the uh, crap clogged up in there. Look at there's so much stuff in there. It's twisting the track. But main thing I don't like about having these things, for one, is the weight. But you see right there, it's a little lip. So cam's over. These steel track machines, they're mean on stuff like this. I mean, you can see, I had to re-weld these ones because they were just tack welded. I told that before in videos um, before. But the steel tracks with this kind of weight, it was cleating those off. So I fixed those up and I bent those. You gotta make sure that you land it on that center brace right there or else um, it'll just bend it. I bent one of them. But if I get a hydraulic dovetail, theoretically, you know, it's gonna be a smooth transition to there. And if I had somebody helping me on the braking point, they could hit the button and click it up over there. And the second thing is Iron Bull, their trailers, the cylinder comes down and uh, the whole mechanics of it, I might find a picture and put it up, but the mechanics of it hold down the trailer, like they push down on the ground right here, so it lifts the ass end of the trailer a little bit, not to mention the ramp coming down. So you don't need to put, I put those blocks in there for safety because that's like a two inch to four inch gap right there. That will just lift the tongue up and lift my truck up and I don't want that. So I put those blocks there. So for one, that'll rule out the blocks. Two. That's going to be its own scotch block because, uh, you know, mechanics are pushing down there. Dovetail's pushing down there. I won't need to put my dual scotch blocks there. Just all in all, it'll be a better system. Plan, I would very much like to have one of those trailers. I'm going to go ahead and tie this thing down, and then I'll catch back up with you guys. I'll remove my scotch block on the truck. 
machine is tied down I think I have it set back just a little bit maybe like four inches from where I run it on the 5500 but we are all tied down ramps up ready to rock and roll so without further ado let's get this road test on the way this is heaviest I've hold of this truck by about 6,000 pounds Modern day automatic transmission and torque converters, those things are champs. I'll show you what I'm looking at, I'm trying to get out here so you can see. I'm just barely hitting the throttle. Yeah, sign a bill and send it to the Road Owners Association here for, I just pruned that tree for them. Let's get these trailer brakes cranked up a little bit. Oh yeah, that'll work. So far, so good. Everybody and their mom's out driving around today. So, um, this truck does not have the auto level in the rear no airbags from factory i actually the story behind the truck maybe i'll go into it later on in depth but i bought it off of a lot did not plan on buying it off that lot at all i just stopped in to show my dad the trucks i planned on ordering a truck with everything that i wanted on it 100 percent. and aside from this truck being white and not having a third seat in the center right here it's got a big console thing that's the only two things on this truck that I didn't didn't like. But it was on the lot, and there's a car in my way. You're gonna have to back up, dude. Look at these guys. So aside from it being white and having that on there, this truck had every option: Laramie package, black leather, all the stuff I wanted did not plan on getting airbags when I ordered it and uh, I did not care that it didn't have it on it when I went to the store to buy the thing let's go to first gear truck there we go so but that is about to change uh, now I see the air ride would have been a good good add-on but no big deal have a package at home for airbags to go on this thing so that will be cherry but this feels freaking awesome driving this rig I just have it on tow haul right now I did downshift it the first manually back there but this thing is like surprisingly awesome to tow with like I knew it was gonna be good but I'm so used to that 5500 with the G56 this thing is just Wow. Pretty easy to drive. That's for dang sure. Let's swap it down, see what our. Um, how do we do that? Give you guys a transmission. Oh, what's that? Oh, I missed it. Trans temp is 163 degrees right now. No idea about EGT stock truck. We'll just let it do its thing. We don't care about that. Engineers at Cummins should know what they're doing. Right now, I'm just having a pleasant conversation. Not really needing to talk loud. This truck's nice and quiet. Trans temp has not gone up at all. I'm gonna downshift because it's bogging me a little bit. So we'll third gear, we're just going nice and easy. Just 30 mile an hour, we're going through a neighborhood. Like this, you know how the definition of awesome is something that leaves you in complete awe. I don't experience anything that is quote unquote by definition awesome, but this, how this truck is handling this load for a complete bone stock 6.7 Cummins with an ISN 410 gear ratio, you know the works, or the tow package, this thing is towing it great. It, I, 
I feel completely in control. Only thing that I would like to possibly upgrade on this, and the one big perk about a 5500 is the brakes. Oh, sorry, car. He's way down there. Don't think I'm cutting that car off. I was already out on the road before he came around the corner. It's a little slow off the line, but that's granted for to save your automatic transmission. You can't be just giving her full bowls right in the beginning. But for right out the gate, this truck is just, I'm in awe right now. How well this truck is handling this load, it is doing an absolutely awesome job. by the mile or the job or whatever it, you know getting up to speed in a hurry is never really a trucker's you know that's not really in the profile you know you're trying to move X amount of weight however fast you're not trying to race or anything so getting up to speed I don't really care too much about that it's nice to have good power going up hills that's for sure but oops brakes the brakes on this are definitely not as good as a 5500. That's obvious. Just physics and size, that narrows that down real quick. But, you know, your service brakes aside, the exhaust brake, I'm not going to be testing the exhaust brake out too much on this trip because the main reason I'm using the truck today is because I know the trip, I know the route. It's going to be pretty easy, something to experience the truck with a little better. But it doesn't have, all it has is a factory exhaust brake, VGT. And with uh, a pack brake on that with a load leash that will be freaking money i couldn't oh man modern day man with an automatic might take over everything not to be a sissy but damn it makes life so much easier the t transmission temp went up to 167. I feel completely in control right now. This might even feel better than driving my 5500, which makes me very nervous because that thing is a hoss, and I put a lot into that truck. But the tow haul doesn't really recognize when to downshift like I would like it to. It likes to run under 2,000 RPM. There's not much power under 2,000. I got it at about uh, 2250 right now on the RPMs, which is perfect coming up this grade right here it didn't have any trouble with that hill it stayed consistent rpms but the brakes we're i'm about to come up to my first stop sign up here so we'll test how good the service brakes are but i have i got the trailer brakes at nine and a half out of ten uh i don't it's, it's flat ground i don't really need too much trailer brake i mean that is at the peak of it right now but we'll see how she plays but this is Outstanding how well this truck is handling this load. work just fine didn't have any issues slowing down right there I uh, man coming down a big hill touching your brakes and stuff not as much surface area on these smaller rotors but it's doing awesome right now I'm just putting around I haven't gone 35 mile an hour but we'll stretch his legs when we get up here on uh, the highway a little bit dang boys <laughs> like this thing is just it out pulls my 5500 that has a lot of goodies on it I don't know how well I do now that it's got EFI live and some other supporting mods but this kind of this this changes things a little bit
little grade up Main Street. second gear <laughs> I would say my gross weight I don't know I don't think it's quite at 40,000 say 39 39,000 would be a pretty good estimate on what my gross is 176 transmission temp right now 2300 rpm in second gear Thing, boys. I don't know. I think I was going about 15, 20 up there. Huh? Then look at the speedometer. Thing is an absolute beast. Tyson, if you're looking to get one of these 3,500 Rams, this thing is a beast. I'm very, I'm very pleased at how well this is doing. I don't want to retire my 5,500 to do the towing with this truck, but this thing is a hoss. It's not even warm today, so I can't even complain about uh, temperature or nothing. But holy crap, this thing is just being a beast. This thing is pulling it very well. I'm very comfortable in here. Transmission temp got up to one, what did I say, 176? It's a 172 now, so it's cooling back off. Uh, but it's handling it like a dream. Plenty of power. I have no complaints on how much power this thing has uh, for effective drivability use. This thing is probably better than my 5500 5500 you have to pick your you know you got a clutch you're on a hill that always kind of sucks taking off on a hill but for automatic it's nicer to not have to stop on a hill but you get the point you can just pull right up the hill hit the stop sign pull right on through it this thing is it's doing good i'm very happy about this truck we're going to I think I'm gonna take it in third gear. Exhaust brake is not holding a ton back. We started at 35 mile an hour, already at 36. So if I had a load leash on there, I wouldn't worry about it. I'd just put it in third, go down the hill. We just hit 40 mile an hour. First time touching the brakes. We'll back her down. 35. And I got a tailgater. I always love them peeps. Back off, Xterra. Back her down to 30. Downshift. I'm downshifted for him. Good job, tow haul. I'd say with load leash on this truck, this truck would be an absolute boss. That is the only thing I would really add to this in those airbags. I'll put those airbags on there just for, uh, I don't even really think it needs it to be honest. It looks, it didn't squat too much. It squatted an inch and three quarters. That ain't bad. Low distribution was, you know, a good factor. Obviously it can squat more if I move the rig forward, but shoot. Had a pack brake load leash onto this Larry. For you hot shotter guys that aren't running load leash and you're in hilly terrain, get a load leash it is awesome uh, i don't think i'll be putting one on this truck anytime soon but it it's a champ hands down this is a great freaking truck right off the line all right let's hope the driveway is not blocked We made it back to the house. All is well. Uh, I'm gonna hop out, switch over to the fancy camera and see how the brakes did, see if, I didn't really ride the brakes at all. We came down one hill, so the brakes shouldn't have any trouble, but we will check to see how well brake temperatures did and stuff like that. But this truck is awesome. I am thoroughly impressed. I do not say 
that like I'm 100% impressed on too much stuff, but this is great. It's very much worth the money. These trucks are very expensive, and I see why. Uh, you know, trim package bumps up the price tag a lot, but I love that too. Inside and out, I'm very happy about this truck. I, I'm not gonna say it's my favorite truck I've ever owned, but I like this truck uh, a lot. This thing is getting with it. So I'm gonna hop out with this camera and we're gonna check the brakes and we're gonna end the video. Who we got here, bud? Who we got? Oh, you just heard, yeah, we got our dog. Guard dog, oh, go get the camera. Oh, this trailer over, Boone. So on my 5500, I have a temperature gun I check my brakes with and I've gotten pretty used to what the temperatures will be, but not hot at all. No brake fatigue at all coming down that hill. I was only hit the brakes two or three times and then came to that complete stop. And if you guys know, the complete stop is what really gets you. But I think I got a little tire right there. Gosh dang it. Yeah, that's definitely a little tire. I've swapped that out. Slow leaks coming at me. So, all in all, there she is, boys. She did good. All right, boys, so there she is. This thing was absolutely awesome. No complaints about this truck. Well, I mean, for a stock truck, awesome power. I do not want really more power than that for a uh, functional drivability, reliability truck. Day in, day out, this truck is awesome on power. Do not need more than that. And then, stopping power, service brakes are fine. They are doing the job good. Uh, full disc brakes on the truck, and I just have 12 by five drums on here. And no problem with that, stop, no problem. Uh, coming down a big hill, it would be nice to have a load leash, but not absolutely needed. If you're smart about it and pick your gears, this truck will do you fine. So again, this is about 31,000 pounds behind the truck. Got home safe, no problem. And I absolutely, I'm thrilled. There's my 5500 just chilling over there. It's got a bunch of parts in the house waiting for that thing, so that thing might uh, turn into a bad son of a bee pretty quick. Not that it isn't already. But thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate you watching the videos. Thumbs up, subscribe, and share this video. This one seems like it should be a good one to share. See how well these Ram 3500 does. It is a boss. But thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.